Hello, everybody, and welcome to the news update. Well, it's the week before Christmas, and it's been kind of an interesting one so far. This is the middle of the week. I'm recording this on Wednesday, and a few strange things have happened. Yes, the big microphone is back. I know some of you hate that, but we got more people listening to the audio version, so they got to give them some love. The other thing that's happened is it's really cold, like like super cold. I It's like some sort of winter freeze here in the Pacific Northwest, so I'm all bundled up. And then the other thing that's happened is we've had just kind of a rash of some really interesting news. So I thought I, I thought I would cover some of the news that's been that's it's just middle of the week. I thought that's already middle of the week and there's already stuff I want to talk about. So let's do the news update. So just some of the stories I wanted to cover in this news update. Uh, I might go into more depth over the weekend. Um, VirtualBox 2.1 is out. Now, there's a lot of new improvements with this VirtualBox release. If you haven't tried VirtualBox, now would definitely be the time. Uh, depending on what version of the of what operating system you're running on, what platform you're running it on, you're going to get different features. Uh, the Mac side sees some hardware support improvement for hardware virtualization. Uh, they've implemented Nehalem's, uh virtualization extensions across the board for all Windows, Linux, and Mac versions, I believe. Um, better support for importing to VMware images, much slicker, much faster now, which is very good. And um, new networking engines so that nat you know, if you have a private address for your uh, virtual machine that will uh, that has a new and improved way to manage all of that, you can handle more connections and things like that. They've also, which is kind of interesting, under under Windows have added support for OpenGL. Now I don't know, I don't believe this means you build to run Compiz under a virtual Linux system on a Windows host, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Anyways, I'll link to it in the uh, sidebar on the YouTube page, so uh, you can uh, go read all of the dozens of features. Um, one more thing that might be useful for some people is they've added support for 64-bit guess, even on a 32-bit host. And where that kind of could be useful is if, you are, if your main desktop is 32-bit, but uh, you need to test something in a 64-bit environment, that's where you would need that. Um, so VirtualBox 2.1.0 was released. The other thing that kind of really kind of struck me by surprise this week, Canonical announced that Ubuntu is going to be available on Amazon's EC2 web services. So now you're going to be able to order up, you're going to be able to go to Amazon's, Amazon's web page, and you can say, I want an Ubuntu server, I want 32-bit, and go. Now, the nice thing about a cloud computing Ubuntu server is with Amazon's EC2 web services, you only pay for what you use. So if, uh, you're, if you have a project, maybe you have some new application you're trying out or maybe some new Twitter killer or something like that, you can load up on the EC2 web services. And as long as you're not getting a ton of traffic or a lot of throughput, you, don't get, you pay for like very bare minimum prices. And then if for one, for one reason or another, uh, you uh, maybe you hit dig, you get the number one dig on uh, for for the day. Then and your and your traffic just spikes massively. Well, EC2 will not only scale with that, but then that's when you would pay. Whereas traditionally, with some of these um, services, if you'd have to buy a server with a ton of bandwidth, and you just pay a flat monthly fee, and then when it died, it died, regardless of how heavy the usage got. So cloud Ubuntu is kind of interesting. At least that's what I'm calling it. And you can get it in 64-bit or 32-bit versions. They have images pre pre. Uh, loaded up, you get loaded into a Zen environment on, uh, on Amazon servers. So kind of an interesting idea. Linux Mint 6 was released this week, which is one of my favorite distributions. It is based on Ubuntu, but they add a ton of their own stuff. First of all, first and foremost, a beautiful theme, but they also have a new software manager that uh, I think may be inspired from Synaptic, but improved upon, and a much better software update manager. It has really cool prioritization and things like that. I really, really dig their software update manager. Another thing that's kind of nice, for especially for a small office, they have a send files across the network tool called Giver, and you have a little applet that you run on your machine, and you select the other computer you want to send to, and I think it uses MDNS to resolve the machines, and then they get a little uh, notification pop-up on their machine, the same kind of pop-ups like when you have a laptop with a low battery or some, some other notification, and it just says right there, so-and-so would like to send you a file, would you like to accept? You click accept, the file downloads, Bob's your uncle, you didn't have to have a server infrastructure, you didn't have to do an NFS mount, but you've got the files, so very cool. I'll probably go more into depth on uh, Linux Mint and maybe a more in-depth look uh, on an episode that comes out later. 
And so those are some of the stories that have gotten my attention so far. Be sure to check out youtube.com slash Jupiter Broadcasting, where we put out videos all throughout the week. If you've liked this video, please rate it and subscribe to our channel. That way you can get notified when we have something awesome. And don't worry, it's not some pesky, annoying notification. It's, it's like just put something on the front page of YouTube or something. I, I don't really actually get it, but it's still a good way to find out when we put out new content. Um, and please leave comments and feedbacks in the YouTube video feed. And if you'd like to catch some of our previous shows, you can always also find the audio versions with those previous shows at jupiterbroadcasting.com. I'm Chris, and this was the News Update.